Ever since global aviation emerged from the depths of the pandemic, travel demand has surged past even the most optimistic projections. Yet the industry now faces a clear paradox. Airlines urgently need larger jets, but the traditional giants, the Boeing 747 and Airbus A380, are no longer viable due to high operating costs, complex maintenance, and their four-engine inefficiency. Many carriers retired them earlier than planned. That leaves a crucial question. What if Boeing and Airbus choose to stretch the A350 and the 777X? This idea is no longer a fantasy. Both manufacturers are seriously exploring it. So how much more capable could these aircraft become, and which one would ultimately lead the next era? Let's find out. As the global aviation industry enters a period of strong recovery, airlines find themselves facing a difficult paradox. They are stuck with the largest twin-engine widebodies currently available, the A350-1000 and the 777-9. Although both are modern and fuel-efficient, they still cannot fully replace the massive capacity gap left behind by the A380, especially at slot-restricted airports like Heathrow JFK or Dubai. When airlines can't increase flight frequency, the only viable solution is to maximize the number of seats on each flight, and this is exactly why the concept of super-stretched variants is gaining attention. Interestingly, concepts like the 777-10 and the A350-2000 are no longer just futuristic sketches. They have begun to cross the threshold into genuine commercial prospects driven by clear market demand and explicit interest from major airlines. Slot constraints are choking the growth of many carriers, forcing them to look for aircraft with greater capacity than the 777-9 or the A350-1000. Meanwhile, four-engine giants like the 747-8 and the A380 have proven to be too expensive and too inflexible, reinforcing the need for an aircraft that can offer near A380 capacity, but at a far lower operating cost. Emirates' stance further reinforces this trend. At the 2025 Dubai Air Show, the airline publicly confirmed its interest in the 777-10, a clear signal that they need an aircraft capable of filling the 440 to 500 seat gap left by the A380. At the same time, many other carriers are seeking a larger A350 variant one that can compete directly with the 777-9 in the 420 to 450 seat segment. It's clear that the market is calling for super stretched wide bodies. The question is no longer whether they will be developed, but when Boeing and Airbus will do this and how they will answer this rapidly growing demand. The Boeing 777-10 is emerging as one of the most ambitious concepts in modern aviation, not only because of the enormous size it aims to achieve, but also because of its mission to fill the void left behind by the iconic four-engine giants, such as the A380 and the B747. Within Boeing, this variant is seen as the natural extension of the 777X platform, which from the very beginning was engineered to become the next-generation successor to the legendary 777 family. Justin Hale, head of 777X Customer Operations, has emphasized that Boeing is working closely with Emirates to evaluate every aspect of this potential variant from performance and structural considerations to safety and commercial viability. This reveals that Boeing's ambition goes far beyond simply stretching the airframe. Their goal is to create an aircraft that can stand firmly for decades to come tailored to the long-term strategies of airlines that require massive passenger carrying capability. To achieve such capacity, Boeing is expected to stretch the fuselage by roughly 5 meters, bringing the total length of the Dash 10 to around 81 meters, making it even longer than the iconic Airbus A380. This marks a symbolic milestone for the first time in history, a twin-engine aircraft would surpass the length of the largest commercial airliner ever built. Despite its massive size, the Dash 10 is optimized to carry between 440 and 500 passengers, depending on the cabin layout. For airlines like Emirates, a three-class configuration with around 440 seats is entirely feasible, and while this is still lower than the A380's 500-plus capacity, it offers far superior fuel efficiency and operational flexibility, crucial advantages in today's environment. At airports where increasing flight frequency is impossible, upgaging becomes the only path to higher revenue, and this aircraft is the closest thing to meeting that need without returning to the costly era of four-engine giants. To make this ambition viable, Boeing must first answer an important question. Is the current 777X platform strong enough to support an even larger variant? The answer lies in the GE9X, the heart of the 777X family. It is the largest and most powerful commercial jet engine ever built, and a key reason the 777-10 is technically feasible. The GE9X is certified to operate at around 105,000 pounds of thrust for the 
but during testing it reached an extraordinary 134, 300 pounds, becoming the strongest engine in the industry, a massive performance buffer Boeing can tap into for the stretched variant. This means the maker does not need a new engine, does not need to redesign the entire propulsion system, and does not need to gamble on a high-risk technology program. They can build on a proven foundation, adjusting only what is necessary to support a longer fuselage, higher weights, and new certification requirements. One of the challenges that cannot be overlooked is ensuring safe takeoff performance in the event of an engine failure, the most demanding test for any twin-engine aircraft. When the fuselage is stretched, the leverage dynamics change, making directional control far more complex. This forces Boeing to reevaluate the entire control system, weight distribution, tail design, and even the electronic stability algorithms to ensure the aircraft remains controllable when only one engine is producing thrust. At the same time, the risk of tail strike during takeoff, already a sensitive issue for long fuselage jets, becomes an even greater concern for the 777-10. American manufacturers' engineers must recalculate rotation angles, liftoff speeds, and may even need to integrate an active tail strike protection system to minimize this risk in all operating conditions. Another noteworthy aspect of the design is the folding wing technology, one of the defining features of the 777X family. The 77710 would continue using this system, allowing the wingspan to remain wide in flight while folding at the tips on the ground. This enables the massive aircraft to fit within Cody gate dimensions instead of requiring oversized parking stands which are scarce and operationally restrictive. At major hubs like Dubai and Heathrow, this advantage becomes essential if Boeing wants airlines to adopt a jet of this scale. However, even if the Dash 10 meets all the technical requirements to take flight, its future depends on far more than engineering. It relies heavily on Boeing's own internal situation. The company is facing a difficult period simultaneously dealing with the delayed progress of the Dash 9 and ongoing issues surrounding the 737 MAX. Financial pressure, workforce strain, and production bottlenecks are forcing Boeing to think extremely carefully before committing to yet another ambitious variant. Their top priority, at least for now, must remain stabilizing the existing 777X program and delivering the Dash 9 on schedule after so many setbacks. Opening a new front with the stretch version could risk overwhelming the entire system. Besides 777 10, Airbus's proposed A350 2000 has become one of the most intriguing topics in the industry not because it aims to replace the A380, but because it targets a far more calculated objective confronting Boeing's 777-9 head-on. While Boeing is exploring the idea of building the world's largest twin-engine aircraft to fill the vacuum left by the Super Jumbo's Airbus is maneuvering toward a different prize. By extending the A350, they hope to step directly into the 420-450 to seat category, a segment where the 777-9 currently stands unchallenged. From an organizational standpoint, the European maker is in a far more advantageous position to pursue such a project than Boeing. The A350 program is already in full swing with both the 900 and 1000 serving global fleets reliably and efficiently. The production system is mature, the supply chain is stable, and the aircraft has earned strong trust from major carriers. All of this gives Airbus a solid foundation from which to consider a stretched variant. Physically, the A350-2000 would likely extend the current 1000 by two fuselage plugs accommodating roughly 40 to 60 additional passengers. An extra emergency exit door would almost certainly be required for certification, but the basic airframe has enough built-in flexibility to handle such modifications. Moreover, strong interest from major operators, particularly Qatar Airways, along with several European and Asian carriers, has pushed Airbus to examine the concept more seriously. Combined with a financially exceptional year, Airbus has both the resources and the momentum to push forward something Boeing cannot confidently claim while still juggling internal setbacks. But the challenge facing Airbus is not political or organizational, it is fundamentally technical. The Achilles heel of the A350-2000 lies in its engines. GE's powerful GE9X gives Boeing tremendous headroom for a stretch 777, but Rolls-Royce's Trent XWB on the A350 was optimized for fuel efficiency rather than high thrust performance. On a significantly heavier aircraft, the Trent XWB may simply not have enough margin to support the increased maximum takeoff weight. This leaves Airbus stuck between two difficult choices, either pressure Rolls-Royce into developing an upgraded version of the engine informally dubbed the Trent XWB+, or sacrifice the aircraft's range to avoid exceeding engine limits. The former is a costly years-long development effort. The latter undermines the very purpose of the A350 family, whose value lies in its ability to operate the world's longest routes. No airline wants to buy a large, long-haul aircraft that suddenly loses long-haul flexibility. But this is what makes the story truly controversial.
As this dilemma grows more visible, the industry has begun to speculate about a far more radical possibility equipping the A350-2000 with GE9X engines. If that were possible, Airbus would instantly bypass its biggest technical challenge and gain a major edge. But reality stands in the way. GE9X is exclusive to the 777X family, and Boeing has no strategic incentive to surrender such a crucial advantage. That exclusivity forces Airbus to rely entirely on Rolls-Royce, meaning the fate of the A350-2000 is inextricably tied to whether an upgraded Trent XWB can be developed without compromising the A350's identity as a fuel-efficient, lightweight, long-range aircraft. This engine puzzle ultimately determines whether the A350-2000 will become a real program or remain an enticing concept on paper. The market is clearly moving towards super-stretched widebodies, and the demand is growing louder each year, but Airbus must first solve the core technical barrier before taking the next step. Until the uncertainty surrounding the Trent XWB is resolved, the A350-2000 will continue to hover in that delicate space between ambition and reality. In the end, a full comparison between the 777-10 and the A350-2000 goes far beyond physical size. It highlights two contrasting development philosophies shaped by very different internal realities at Boeing and Airbus. On paper, the Dash 10 enjoys the clearer technical path thanks to the already proven GE9X engine giving Boeing a solid baseline for a stretched variant. Yet this advantage is undercut by Boeing's current limitations, an overstressed production system regulatory pressure, and an enormous backlog that makes launching a new derivative extremely difficult in the near future. Airbus faces the opposite dynamic. The A350-2000 must overcome a more complex engineering challenge, mainly the need to significantly upgrade the Trent XWB engine to handle higher weight and performance demands. However, Airbus is in a far stronger position operationally and financially. With the A350 program running smoothly and the company enjoying a stable industrial ecosystem, Airbus is better placed to initiate a new stretch despite its technical hurdles. In short, Boeing's risks center on timing and capacity, while Airbus's risks hinge on engine development itself. Strategically, the two aircraft also aim at slightly different market needs, giving airlines distinct options depending on their long-haul philosophy. Gulf carriers illustrate this divide clearly. Emirates would likely gravitate toward the Dash 10 for its maximum seating and A380 replacement role, whereas Qatar Airways might prefer the A350-2000 for fleet commonality and efficiency. Across Europe and Asia, either concept could appeal depending on how carriers balance sheer capacity with fuel burn economics on dense long-haul routes. Despite uncertainties, both aircraft represent the next chapter in high-capacity, high-efficiency, wide-body travel. Whichever emerges first will help define the future of the mini-jumbo segment for the coming decade.